Hey everyone, Daniel Rubino here, Windows Central, and today I'm gonna give you my top five reasons why I like to use Fitbit. Stay tuned. All right, before we get started, first I want to talk about why we're doing this video in the first place. Well, I wear this a lot in these videos that we shoot here, and everybody thinks it's an Apple Watch, which is fine. I mean, I own an Apple Watch too, but this is actually the Fitbit Versus. Now, I've been using Fitbit since 2012, and I kind of own almost all of them, so I'm a pretty big fan of the company, what they've done. So I'll go and give you the top five reasons why I use them, and I'll also give you a few reasons why I actually don't like Fitbit too. Let's get to it. All right, number one, it should be kind of obvious, but here it is, Windows 10 support. Fitbit's been one of the first companies to embrace Windows 10 in a universal Windows platform, and they were also supportive of Windows Phone for a very long time. In fact, they continue to maintain the app and it gets updated pretty regularly. It's the full featured app as well. It matches iOS and Android to a T, and it's just a really good experience. So yeah, Fitbit always has a little spot in my heart because they love the platform so much. All right, number two, battery life. So many smartwatches these days are still facing the problem with long-lasting battery. Whether it's an Apple Watch or Android Wear, you're still talking maybe a day or two days of battery life. Fitbit, you can go four to seven days. I just find it's much easier to manage in your life. And if that's important to you, well, Fitbit is still good. Now, there are some alternatives out there like Withings, but they're not nearly as powerful as Fitbit, and I don't really care for the quality too much there either. But if you really want long battery life, we're talking two weeks, maybe check out Withings. Number three, sleep analysis. Here's a little fact. Years ago, I used to be a sleep technician here in New York City at Wild Cornell Medical Center, where I would do research on patients for sleeping. I'm a big fan of sleep, in other words. In fact, you spend a third of your life sleeping. You want to do it right. Well, in my opinion, Fitbit still has the best sleep analysis on the market. Apple Watch doesn't even have it. And Android Wear, well, they do have some ones out there, and they're pretty good. But the technology that they're using here in the algorithms has been very accurate. And I just consider this essential if you're interested in how well you're sleeping. Don't forget also Fitbit is supposed to bring on their sensors later on this year, which will help detect sleep apnea. Now this isn't going to necessarily be a replacement for your doctor, but I'm a big fan of early detection of sleep apnea. If this thing can tell you, you may have an issue and it gets you to your doctor, well that's a pretty awesome technology. So many people have this disorder, and if this can help them, I'm very excited about it. All right, number four, community. One of the best things about Fitbit is gonna be the ability to connect up to your friends and family. In fact, so many people use Fitbit, there's a good chance you'll know someone on it when you sign up for it. And that's actually a big deal because you can see how others are doing, you can compete with them, you can cheer them, you can jeer them, you can do challenges. It's just a lot more fun. Unlike Apple Watch, it doesn't really do that. Now, another aspect of this community is the fact that Fitbit bought Pebble a few years ago, and the Pebble community was die hard. In fact, they're very similar to the Windows Phone fan base, and I really appreciate that. Now, a lot of those devs who used to make watch faces for Pebble are making watch faces for Diversa. It's been really a neat experience. There's all sorts of creative designs on the store, and it really keeps me involved with the Fitbit Versa as I'm always changing out the watch faces. So that having that community aspect is just a big deal with Fitbit, and I absolutely love it. All right, number five, it's gonna be price. So the most expensive Fitbit Versa right now is $200. You can actually get the Ionic for a little bit more than that, but you can get this for a lot cheaper. The new Versa Lite is $160, and the Charge 3 is $150. And those price points, still a little bit expensive. They actually do have cheaper ones on the market as well, but that gets people's foot in the door for smartwatches and fitness trackers, and I think it's really competitive. When you look at the Apple Watch, it starts at $400. That's twice the cost. That's a pretty expensive jump. So if you're looking for a value here, Fitbit's gonna have it. All right, so those are the reasons why I like Fitbit. Everything's not perfect. So here are a couple of reasons why I actually don't like Fitbit, or at least I have some problems with it. Number one, the apps suck. Don't buy the Fitbit Versa if you really want to use apps on it. Even the Hughes thing, it's okay, it's kind of cool, but it's more proof of concept. Don't buy it for that. The apps are just terrible. Next up is connected GPS. So the Fitbit Ionic actually has full GPS built in. If you want that, get that one. But the rest, like Versa Lite, Charge 3, only have connected GPS. And some people feel very strongly about connected GPS. I don't actually mind it. I use it on bike trails all the time. But if you really want dedicated, well, you have to look elsewhere. Connected GPS can suck if you need to use it often. And finally, just keep this in mind, none of these are a real smartwatch. I would describe Fitbit as being smartwatch-ish, but it's definitely not a smartwatch. Yeah, it has some features like it, but if you're looking for something more sophisticated that mirrors your phone, well, you have to look at getting an Apple Watch or something from Android Wear. All right, so now that we got that all the way, which Fitbit's the right one for you? So I got three in front of me here. I have the Fitbit Versa, the Versa Lite, and the Charge 3. And actually, all three of these devices are really good in my opinion. Now, the Versa Lite is probably the one that most people will be okay with. It's 160 bucks. Now, it is missing some features like NFC for tap to pay. And again, some people really need that feature. So if you want that, get the full Versa version, the special edition for tap to pay. I never actually use tap to pay, so it doesn't matter to me, but just keep that in mind. You also can't store music on the Versa 
Versa Lite. And that may be a big deal depending on how you work out. Now I actually use a regular Versa when I'm at the gym because it does store my music and I can use my Bluetooth headphones with them. Now, if you're looking just to get into Fitbit, I actually like the Charge 3 a lot. I think it's a very good price point at $150. And it actually has most of the features of the Versa Lite. It's just missing the giant screen on it, and it doesn't run all the apps as well. But those apps, like I said, aren't very good. Sure, you can use weather, but I'd rather just get a watch face that has weather on it. Now, the Charge 3 is one of the smaller ones out there. So if you actually do want to wear like an Apple Watch, but you also want Fitbit, I know that sounds weird. I actually do that sometimes. You can actually get the Charge 3, and it works out pretty well. This also gets really good battery life. I can push seven days on this. So when I go on long trips, I just pack this. I don't need to take the charger with me. But it does all the same things as first light. You get that sleep tracking, you get that heart rate monitoring. It's all very good actually. So this is a great way to start off if you don't want a full smartwatch feature or you like to stick with your analog watch. All right, so there are a few reasons why I'm a big fan of using Fitbit. Now, now it all is perfect. I actually did pick up an Apple Watch Series 4 recently. I'm using it with my car. If that sounds a little weird, that's okay. I may do a video on that explaining why I'm using it with my Tesla Model 3. If you want to hear about that, leave me a comment below and we'll see about doing that. Otherwise, if you like this video, give us a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching. Take care, everyone. Number three, sleep analysis. Little side, no, what do I want to say? Pause for a sec, hold on. Yeah.